Good morning and welcome back to my channel viewers, Cash Fix. Today we are working on 2009 Acura TL front brake pads and rotor replacement. It also the same matter to do a 2009 to 2014 Acura TL. So let's go ahead and get started. So first you need to locate your V-lock. If you have a V-lock, if you don't, don't worry about it. If you do have a V-lock, you need to find in your glove compartment or it can be fine in your trunk. So look around your car, make sure you have this before you start any kind of work. So I, I found this, I have a V-lock. Uh, set this with your hand. Don't use any kind of wrench. So make sure it just sat properly. Now go ahead and break it loose. 22 millimeter socket will be required to for the lug nuts. You need to find a jack spot or lifting spot. Every car has a four lifting spot. In my case, this is the lifting spot for all the Honda and Acuras. So find this, make sure, place your jack underneath and lift up your car. So once you jack up your car, you're gonna need a jack stand for your safety reasons. However, I don't have a room to fit this jack stand because I didn't jack up enough, but I do have a lift, on floor lift. So I'm gonna use this instead of the jack stand. That's it, just enough to support it. All right, so the wheel is free. I'm using this tool, I love this tool. Uh, Goodyear, made by Goodyear, 24 volts, uh, half inch impact wrench. I love it. Remove the lug nut. Remove the wheel. And always is a good idea if you place under the car just for excess safety. First of all, remove this screw. This is a rotor retaining screw. As you can see, it has a Phillips head. So I have this Mac tool impact screw remover. Place this with 3 8 wrench. and loosen up. In my experience, sometimes this is true, it's very stubborn, so you might have to drill it out or you might have to extract it and re-thread it, uh, but it depends on car vehicle to vehicle. Another tool, I love this, made by Husky 12 board, three half ratchet. I'm gonna use this to completely remove the screw. Like I said, if you don't have fancy tools, you can use uh, just a regular Phillips head screwdriver, but it could be hard, try some better tool. Uh, also, you can use the impact tool, impact screwdriver. It comes with the bit, use the bit, hammer it, and break it loose. So this is another one, same screw. Tell you what, it will help you to remove the uh, caliper and the bracket screw amazingly. Let me show you. So once you turn the steering wheel, the first thing you're gonna do, we need to remove this bolt right here and that bolt is right here. 17 millimeter socket for this bolt and this bolt. These are the pins, caliper bolt, caliper pins. 
one and two. Let's go ahead and break them loose and remove them. Loosen up this one. Lose the top one. Move these bolts. Bolts. Two bolts. Put them inside. Go this caliper out. You may need to compress this a little bit. If you have a screwdriver, try to compress it. If you can, just pull it out and tie up with bungee cord or some. It said there. Go ahead, pull your brake pads. This is the left one, the outer one. That's the inner one. Then next, we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this bolt and this bolt. I believe they are 17, but let me just make sure. No, actually they are 19 millimeter bolts. Nineteen millimeter socket. I have a half inch, half inch ratchet. Bracket bolt one and two. They both are nineteen millimeter. Don't pull the top one first, otherwise the bracket is gonna fall. So remove the bottom one first, completely remove it. Remove the bolt. And now you can hold the bracket with one hand and remove the bolt. And remove the bracket. Before removing any part, removing caliper bracket or anything, make sure you have lug nut just to secure. Since you removed the uh, screw, retainer screws for the rotors, so don't let it fall on you. So I had this lug nut back as a safety. If you wiggle it or something, it won't, it's not gonna fall on you. So now go ahead and pull this rotor back and remove the lug nut. And you, now you can remove the whole rotor. All right, so I have a new brake rotors, brake pads, and it comes with the hardware. I bought this whole set from Amazon. They're about like 80 bucks. Uh, this is also uh, the the interchange part number for Sentry Game, Cobandex, and Reptos. Uh, this part, I can drop a link, uh, the Amazon link into the comment box. So, uh, Nice stuff. Let's go ahead and measure the part. Make sure they're same height. The rotor techniques look the same. What you can do, lay them flat and see they are even. It's perfect size. Before you putting this rotor on the hub, make sure it, it has some grease just to uh, protect the rust. So use the brake cleaner, spray on the rag just a little bit and wipe it off. Wipe off all this grease.
said, like that. All right, so this rust, you need to remove it. Use a wire brush before you putting a rotor on this hub. So make sure clean all the rust. Let's go ahead and put the rotor back. You see one and two, these are the retainer screw holes. Make sure if they matches with these two screw holes. So in my case, this is, they are they're both perfectly aligned. Now go ahead and put the screw back. And before you do that, use a lug nut to secure the rotor so it won't fall or drop on the floor or your feet. Let's go ahead and secure the rotor with one lug nut. Screw. Secure with screw. I'm gonna use my three egg scratcher. They do have a cart, uh, but I don't remember on top of my head, but definitely I will just add into my descriptions or I just add in the uh, comment below. Since this rotor is secured by these two retainer screws, so you can go ahead and remove the lug nut. And see, now we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, uh, bracket back. So before we put the bracket back, we need to take the pin out, pull them out, service them, clean them, lube them, and put it back. Also, my brake pads comes with the hardware, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace the hardware as well. So let's pull out this pin first. Oops, it looks like very tight. I think that's what, this was the problem. Yup. Oh, Lord. Oh my God. Look how rusty the pin is. No lube, nothing. This is very bad. Pull the other one out. This is better. But you can see, it was completely seized. When the pin seized in the caliper, it won't release the brake. And this is why your brake pads or the rotors, they burn out, they warp, or you see a lot of glaze on the rotors. So let's go ahead and clean this pin clean the both pins, lube, lube the pins, and put it back. Spray some brake cleaner. Wipe it off. I use this sandpaper sand the pen because it was like a lot of rust on the pen. I had to keep doing it. So I cleaned the pins. I used uh, sandpaper to sand them all. It looks better. And let's go ahead. Loom them up. Silk Glide. This is one of my favorite. Uh, multi-purpose, all-weather, and high-temperature grease. So let's go ahead and loop the pins. You don't need a whole lot of grease, just, just enough to cover the surface. So they can move freely inside. like 
that. Same thing with this one. Spin it a few times. You kind of feel it, it's not dragging or not stucking inside the uh, caliper. Make sure to move freely. Okay, there you go. Pull them out. bracket is ready to bolt on. Hold this bracket right here. Hold it with one hand. Use left hand to align the bolt. manufacturer torque before you tie any board. These are new brake pads. Make sure they're the same. Friction material is the same. Almost same. Check the size back to back. They look the same and test on the uh, caliper just dry just to make sure it's a perfect size yep this is a perfect size now go ahead loop both ends and put them in just a little bit of loop make sure your loop don't let it touch your uh, friction area or the brake surface it up a bit. Line up in the caliper, and there you go. The back one. There you go. They're both in their place perfectly. So now it's the time to compress this, these two pistons, compress this in the back, the fluid will go all the way up to a brake reservoir. So I have this tool, it's called a brake compression tool, a piston compression tool. So let's go ahead and do that. 
here. This tool squeeze enough. fully compressed piston they are all the way in sometime because of the corrosion outside of the piston you may your the boot which is kind of popping out so the best thing just go around uh, slowly gently outside the uh, uh, piston area and the ear will come out and it will sit flat now go ahead and put this back pins the top one and the bottom one Perfect. and 17 millimeter bore As a reminder, check your uh, manufacturer's specific torque specification before you tighten up any bolt. There you go, where you tight. Before you uh, put the wheel back, these two rotator screws are tight. Bracket bolts are fully tight. These two caliper pins are fully tight. This is another a sign that your caliper pins are moving freely. As you can see, it wasn't like before. So I hope it's gonna do the job perfectly. Let's go ahead and straighten up the wheel. Cross pattern one, two, three, four, five. Once you're done with this, lower the car, check your brake fluid level, and don't forget to pump your brake pedal a few times before you go to this type. Alright, lower your jack. and Hondas and Acuras these models they have 80 foot-pound torque uh, but I said for safety reasons like 85 foot-pounds let's go ahead and check that Cross pattern. And, and that's with hand. So, this is how we do 2009 Acura TL front brake pads and rotor replacement. Uh, it also the same way to do some Honda Accord model and uh, 2009 up to 2014 Acura TL. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe my channel. If you, if you have any vehicle or the project you're working on and if you want me to make a video, please leave it in the comment box. And thank you very much for watching my channel. See you later.